What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Feed the Beast Infinity on the Hermitcraft server. So guys, uh, since last episode I kind of changed this around. Uh, I w ended up using the Draconic Evolution mob grinder down there. Um, yep. And I moved this Tesseract. I had the Tesseract above the grinder before. And it seemed like the Tesseract was letting light through and kind of making the spawn rate a little lower than it should be. But anyway, now we're getting a crazy amount of spawns in here. And that mob grinder is able to keep up. Yes, we are doing really well. Uh, in fact, if we look at our system here, we can see <laughs> just in the top items, we have uh, bones. There's now like one of our top items here. 517,000 bones. I'm not sure what we're going to do with all of those. Uh, all, over 100,000 necrotic bones and 27,000 weather skeleton skulls. I think we're good for a little bit. <laughs> I think we're going to be fine. Um, also off camera, I went ahead and I made one of these Magic Bees Mysterious Magnets. I really like these a lot better than the, um, the Batania Magnet, for instance. Uh, the reason why, if we had this thing on, and say I was to accidentally, I don't know, cue my wireless terminal into the void, oh, oh, yep, I got it back. The Batania Magnet would have let that go all the way down to the void and you'll never see it again. So yeah, I like this magnet a lot better. The only thing is you can't like hold shift to like turn it off or whatever. You have to actually shift right click it, turn it off, and then turn it back on. You have to remember that. Uh, but other than that, I really like how this works. So this is the top tier version. You can see those items right there kind of trying, or are trying to be attracted to me. Um, <laughs> yeah, the top tier one can pull items from quite a distance away. So I do like this magnet a whole lot. Uh, but anyway... We're getting a bunch of experience, as you can see down here. Uh, that experience I had being sent over through a Tesseract uh, into our Liquid XP uh, Bedrockium Drum. Now I have a sewer collecting the experience and we're collecting mob essence. So we're going to have a bunch of essence from that experience, which is awesome. So that is another good thing about setting up this grinder is we're collecting all the mob essence and all the liquid XP. Very cool, very cool. Uh, so let's warp back over here. And let's go over to our liquid storage area, which we still need to set up properly, but yeah, our liquid XP bedrockium drum is full, completely full. We can't store any more experience. So that also means that over here at our, oh, nope, that's the ore processing room we need to go to. Over here at our ore processing room, Oh my goodness, these chunks are not loading fast enough. Uh, yeah, we're going to be collecting a bunch of experience over here. This has nowhere to go, so we're going to have to figure out a way to start voiding XP. Liquid XP. We need to void it. There's no other way around it. I'm not actually sure uh, what the best way to void liquids are. I know that Buildcraft has like a void pipe. Other than that, I'm not sure what other things we can do to void liquids so i was kind of looking in here before and i saw there's a whole bunch of like the songcraft void stuff um void capsules yeah there's the void fluid pipe mana void void sigil hmm i think build craft is probably our only option right i mean it kind of feels like that uh so let's go ahead and make a void pipe here oh we need pipe sealant that's made from oh slime balls perfect all right let's make this stuff real quick so, void fluid pipes, we need a void transfer pipe, which is ink, glass, and redstone. I think that's the first build craft of pipes that I've made in the series so far. Uh, slime ball. Whoa. Yeah, this guy is freaking out. <laughs> it's going between like the smallest size, the medium size, and the large size. It even does that in my hand when I hold it. That's the mob soul from Draconic Evolution. I was just in the nether and... I killed some magma cubes and that happened. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. All right, let's get that thing out of here. So we were looking for, oh yeah, slime balls. Slime ball, and that turns into pipe sealant. That's what we need. And then one of those plus one of these equals one of these. Awesome. I don't know if 10 millibuckets a second is gonna be enough. Hopefully it will be. So what I should be able to do is come over to our fluid storage area and just stick that on that Tesseract. Because this is set, whoop, flight. <laughs> this is set up for uh, liquid XP. So if I do this, I believe we should be voiding all of our liquid XP now. I hope. I hope. I don't know. Um, actually, maybe I should set it up 
Maybe it'd be easier to see if that thing's working if I set that up like right here. Okay, so that pipe is drained. That seemed to actually drain pretty quickly. Yeah, we're getting XP in and then it gets voided. Okay, so that's good. That's that's working exactly how we need that to work. More than one bedrockium drum full of liquid XP just feels like a waste. There's like really no point in ke keeping that much. So yeah, we'll just go ahead and get rid of the excess stuff. Okay, so in my inventory here, I do have a dungeon key. Oh, <laughs> I guess I should also talk about this. Yeah, I um put Soulbound on my Ender Pouch, and that thing is glowing like super bright compared to everything else. I don't know if just because it's a bigger texture and these have like smaller sections that are glowy or whatever, but yeah, this thing's really bright. <laughs> um, so yeah, I made the magnet. I was just trying out some things. Draconic Evolution, I was seeing... Uh, we just updated our pack to 141. I was seeing if Draconic Evolution, if I could do the computer with this thing still, or yet, and I cannot. But it does have comparator output, so I can see there's a Redstone Power 7 coming off of this thing. Uh, which means that our Draconic Core is half full, which it is. So that's pretty awesome. I could hook up some kind of a computer thing to read that signal and then turn on the reactor and turn it off when this thing gets to like redstone level 14. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, I have a runic dungeon key in my inventory. I was exploring a runic dungeon. Uh, Jevin had already gone through there and has a portal set up near spawn. So I was over there checking that out. Let's head over there real quick. Let's go... I guess we'll just use the nexus and we'll go to spawn okay so over here oh 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 <laughs> come on load stuff yeah over here uh past dmax area i think yeah we can see it right here uh there's a portal that goes to a runic dungeon now these are unbreakable it says right there on the tooltip dungeon bricks unbreakable um yeah, I wanted to actually get some of these things. <laughs> Let's back up a second. So if we search for Wither, we can see there is some blocks in here. Uh, this is Witherproof, the Reinforced Obsidian. Uh, I saw that there is all of these blocks here from Runic Dungeons that are Wither Boss proof as well. So I wanted to get some of these. So I was clicking on this and was like, how do you make that? So you need Dungeon Brick plus Obsidian to make the Witherproof ones. And I was like, okay, so how do you get the Dungeon Brick? Let's try and find the original one, actually, this thing, no, eh, this click, okay, so we can make the dungeon bricks by getting dungeon bricks and obsidian, uh, or these are the obsidian infused ones, yeah, anyway, I was trying to find out how to make these things, and this is where you do it, uh, so you need to get, like, just regular stone bricks plus one of these dungeon keys to get you some of these dungeon bricks, so I was like, oh, cool, so that's not too bad. <laughs> so I went into the runic dungeon here, and a little bit of this has been explored. Now, this is an interesting area. Uh, what it is is just a bunch of rooms that have... Oh, let me turn on my, my sounds. Uh, what this is is a bunch of rooms that have, like, chests and hidden things in them, but all these blocks are unbreakable, so you can't cheat through it or whatever. So, yeah, you can't break these blocks. You have to go to each room... And then there's a key to unlock these to go to another room. Uh, so I was kind of going through here and I found a key. I think it was in this room. This was like a library. And so I have this runic key. So I was trying to find out if there was a way to get extra keys. Uh, it doesn't look like it. Uh, not from just exploring rooms. There's only one key per room to unlock another room. Uh, so then I got thinking, well, how do you get extra keys to make those weatherproof blocks? <laughs> Actually, you know what? Let's use this key real quick. Bink. So that's what happens. You use the key. It uh, unlocks a new area. And then you go explore and you try and find another key. Now, I've already done a room like this. This is very, like, complicated to try and navigate around. So we can just use, like, a, a lumber axe or whatever and get up here. Uh, I saw there was a dispenser at the top of one of these before. We'll just break through. <laughs> yeah. There's chests and there's, like... Dispensers and all sorts of stuff death blooms. Yeah, we get some random things like this uh, There's another chest hidden got some more stuff black lotus Huh, okay obsidian So yeah, we're gonna break this stuff, but yeah, there should be like a dispenser I think it's probably gonna be over here There it is and the dispenser has our dungeon key, right? So there's one key per room <laughs> There's no way to get extra ones just by navigating around these dungeons 
So I was thinking, well, how do you get more keys? Well, as it turns out, if you defeat a wither boss in the runic dungeon, it gives you keys. So what we need to do is we need to spawn a whole bunch of withers in the runic dungeon and kill them there. And we should get our division sigils, get our nether stars, and get some of those keys so we can make our wither proof blocks. <laughs> yep, it's kind of a long and drawn out process, but I think it's going to be kind of fun and it'll be different than uh, what everybody else is doing using these Ender I.O. blocks, which might be easier and cheaper to get, but I'd rather do something different. So, let me get some things together, guys, and I'll meet you right back in the Runic Dungeon. Alright, guys, so we're in a room. This was uh, originally a library room or whatever, a bunch of bookshelves in it, but it is now completely clear. Uh, so I have a bunch of stuff on me. Uh, it takes four Soul Sand and three Wither Skulls to make... Uh, wither boss right so I have enough to do a stack of wither bosses 64 of each uh, stars and the division sigils and I guess we'll get 64 runic keys uh, so we're gonna be getting three items per boss drop which means we need three spots available in our inventory um, so if we look right here I have to well I don't have to but I have this stuff in my inventory so we can do one two three four five six seven eight bosses at a time Okay, so let's go ahead and try and do eight withers. <laughs> so these blocks are unbreakable. I do believe they are not breakable to wither bosses either. So this should be pretty cool. Uh, let's go ahead and grab our builder's one back out of here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, we'll go ahead and put that away. Um, yeah, we can put the soul sand away. And we are going to need enough for eight <laughs> wither bosses yeah I need to clean up my inventory before we actually spawn these things so I have room to collect everything because if you don't collect things I think these wither bosses can destroy the items okay so we have that done so I need a total of eight more of these skulls everything else can go into my ender pouch okay I think we're good I think that should be enough okay so we're gonna go ahead and spawn eight of these things <laughs> And we're going to kill these by hand. Eventually we'll set up an automatic thing. This is going to get us towards the automatic, but for now, we're going to do it this way. Oh yeah. <laughs> so there are enemies through the walls. Let me actually turn this down a little bit more. Yeah, there are enemies on the other side of the wall. You can see these guys are like trying to get at them. There's a bunch of zombies and skeletons and stuff like that. So this is like the perfect place to kill these guys because they are completely distracted. So all I gotta do is just hit them with my AOE sword. They're, oh, you know what? I don't have my magnet on. Ah, uh, let's turn the magnet on so my stuff doesn't get destroyed. Okay. <laughs> so let's go ahead and kill these guys. Die, 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 die. Yeah, flaw my plan. I forgot to have my magnet on. Yeah. Okay, so did we get everything? Uh, looks like we lost some stuff, maybe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We got eight stars. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight keys. Well, looks like we lost a heart and we lost a division sigil. Oh, well. Uh, Should have left my magnet on. <laughs> I'll remember to do that next time. So, that is a pretty easy way to collect ourselves a bunch of these dungeon keys, which will allow us to progress in this dungeon or make our wither blocks. Um... Yeah, I want to get my blue ender pouch here. This I have set up to my AE system, so everything goes in here gets sucked into my AE system. Whoops. Yeah, let's go ahead and put all this stuff away. Uh, Nether stars, put all this away. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to do this a little bit longer. I'm going to try and get a decent amount of nether stars going here, and then we will look at upgrading our tools. And then look at making some wither-proof blocks. Alright guys, I'll see you in just a little bit. Alright guys, so I spent some time and I killed a few wither bosses and we got some stuff done here. So I want to upgrade my tools. Uh, I already got the Awakened Core done, the Draconic Energy Core, and got some stuff ready to go. So the only thing we need to do is drop our tools in here and upgrade them. But, I'm not going to make the same mistake again. Uh, let me go ahead and go into the inventory of these tools. And I'm going to remove my enchantments. So we got Silk Touch, Fortune 3, Efficiency 5, and Soul Bound. So we'll go ahead and pull those off of this tool here. And we will upgrade this one to 
the Draconic Pickaxe. Aw, oh, yeah. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll do the same thing for the rest of these tools. Uh, unfortunately, I can't put Soulbound on just by dropping that book in there. I'm going to have to manually enchant that. So we're on the inventory for this guy. Is that Soulbound right here? Okay. I just kind of want to keep these in order so I know what we got. Okay, so the shovel is now removed the enchant. We will do that. So now we got the Draconic Shovel. So that's charging up. Yeah, I'm also standing on this thing, which is charging it, which is pretty cool. Uh, so let's also upgrade our sword, or at least remove the enchants off our sword. Do that real quick. Yeah, that's a lot of enchantments on all these things. Okay, so we will put the sword right in here. And we will let that charge up as well. Okay, so now that we got all that stuff done, <laughs> we can take these tools, and there is another upgrade we can do, and that will turn it into the Draconic Staff of Power. Um, what this does is it basically combines your shovel, your sword, and your pickaxe into one awesome thing. Look at that, plus 60 attack damage. The sword by itself is plus 40, so plus 60, that is way better than anything else. What's plus 30 mob health? I don't know what that means. Plus 20 mob health. I don't know what that means. Does that mean like enemies have plus 20 more health so we do like 20% less damage? I'm not sure. <laughs> but yeah, I want to go ahead and make this guy. So let's do that. Wait, what was the recipe again? I lost it. So shovel, sword, pickaxe. Pickaxe, shovel, sword. And then the rest of these are these guys. Did I do that incorrect? What did we do wrong here? Sword, shovel, pickaxe, awakened, awakened. Um, is it because I let them charge up that it's not going to work? Hmm. Okay, well, let me figure that out and we'll be back, guys. Yeah. So, <laughs> it turns out you can't craft something if you put things in the wrong spot. Mm hmm so put the sword in the right spot shovel in the right spot now we can create our draconic staff of power this is gonna be epic okay so with this thing how many inventory spots do we have to oh my goodness there's so much stuff void junk attack aoe wow 25 times 25 okay um so it's either one by one three by three five oh okay so this is configurable Okay, so 25 by 25, I think that's what we want. <clears throat> uh, dig depth, size, safe mode, true. Dig speed modifier, okay, so that's as far as it goes. So the inventory for this thing, oh, junk filter, and enchants. So we can put more enchants up here? I'm not sure, can we put soul bound? Oh, we can put soul bound on there now without having to uh, anvil it on there, perfect. So efficiency. No, I just put fortune, <laughs> silk touch, efficiency. What else do we have? That's kind of like the same things. Reaper, I think we want. Sharpness. Can I put sh sharpness right here? Is that? No, that doesn't allow me to do that. Okay, well, hmm. I think what we're going to do, we're going to take away fortune and we'll put sharpness on there. Where to go? Where to go? There it is. Found it. <laughs> okay. So this is the junk filter. This is the enchants. I was thinking that, yeah, I was saying this is junk filter and enchants for all of these, but no, that is not correct. So now, what does this say? Plus 80 attack damage? No way. This thing is crazy, guys. Okay. Uh, I think the next thing I want to do is put all these books away. Oh my goodness. There is so much description text on these. Wow. Okay, I think the next thing I want to do, I want to make the Bow of the Wyvern. I want to upgrade that. And it looks like we're going to have so many more spots available for things now. This is going to be awesome. Okay, so let me make the bow real quick and we will be back. Alright guys, so you know with plus 80 attack damage, we have to try this again. Come on now. <laughs> we got to give this a shot. Whoops, placed that one in the wrong spot. Let's do this before these guys explode and break my soul sand and... Skulls, there we go. Alright, so yeah, I'm very curious how this is gonna go now that we have our Draconic Staff of Power with a 25 by 25 range with plus 80 attack damage. I'm gonna hit everybody in this room, I think. Is that it? They done? <laughs> 
is crazy. And yes, we have all the stuff back. It looks like we might have lost one division sigil, but that's fine. We do got 10 stars. We got a bunch of these keys, 10 of the yellow hearts. Ooh, that is so good. So I'm wondering, can I hit guys through these walls? No? Hmm. Uh, one thing I do want to try, though, since we have all these keys... I want to open this up and just see what was on the other side of the screen. What did I just get? A bunch of slime balls and things like that. Um, look at all the experience that's in this room. So it looks like I did kill things through the wall. Oh my goodness, that is crazy. <laughs> so what I want to do... Oh, you're not dead. Now you're dead. So what I want to do is, since these blocks are completely indestructible... Oh, I gotta get rid of this stuff in my inventory. That's gonna drive me crazy. Uh, since... These blocks are completely indestructible, and we get something positive for killing things in this room. I think what we're going to do is we're going to set up an automatic wither killer here in the runic dungeon. I think what we could do is just kind of like block off a little corner like this, just so there's a 3x3 three three area where a wither can spawn and be killed. Um, I think we can miscraft portal uh, wither bosses into a little 3x3 three three room. Uh, have our draconic killer thing and then have item collection and send that back to our uh, Over or not our overworld our base in the miscraft world So I think that's gonna be the next thing we try. So let's head back to our base Whoop. <laughs> Yeah, I want to make some of those indestructible blocks. I think that'll be ooh. Okay, come on lag. Come on all right, guys, that was weird. I'm not sure why I got all that lag there for a second. But anyway, we are back. So <laughs> I want to try and make some of those indestructible blocks. I believe that we need to just make some stone bricks. So let's go ahead and do a stack of that. And we will take the stone brick and wrap that around the keys that we've collected so far. Yeah, we got 54 of those. So that makes uh, dungeon bricks. So let's make... I am seeing that we actually are not using these keys. That is something I was not aware of. I thought you'd make eight of these and it would use that key up, but no. Okay, well, <laughs> maybe we don't need to set this up in the actual runic dungeon, but I guess it'll allow us to get all these keys so we can run through there and just open doors without having to try and find them in each room. Hmm. I still want to do this regardless. <laughs> but yeah, that is really interesting that we are not using up that key. I don't know if that's a bug or if that's the intended thing. Now I want to try this, like, outside of the applied energistic system. Let's try it here. Do we keep the key still? We do. Interesting. Okay, well, now I know. Okay, so now that we have these, <laughs> let's look at the witherproof blocks. And... Yeah, so it's just... Oh, compressed obsidian. Okay, so obsidian, nine makes it compressed, and then we need eight of those to make one witherproof block. Wow, that's actually more expensive than I thought it was. I thought this was all just obsidian. Okay, well now I need to find out how to make a bunch of compressed obsidian. <laughs> how much obsidian do we have? Okay, 135. Um, so we have the lava fabricator, and we have a bunch of those igneous extruders. I actually took down a lot of those, so I think what I'm going to end up doing, I'm going to put the Lava Fabricator going into the Igneous Extruder here, and we are just going to make Obsidian straight away. Let's see if I can do that. If I put this guy right here, and we set this to import from the top. Okay, yeah, that is filling up ever so slowly, <laughs> but it is filling. Okay, so I might have to make more of these at a time, but yeah, the Igneous Extruder will allow us to make 16 obsidian at once. So I just need to pump some water in here and we should be good to go. So let me make a bunch of obsidian, guys, and we will be right back. Alright, guys, so I got some obsidian production going on here. And this is kind of a weird way of doing it, but it seems to work pretty well. We're getting 16 at a time and fairly quickly. It looks like we're making about a stack every 5 seconds or so. Uh, so I'm sending water through this Tesseract. We made a new channel called Water. And over here, <laughs> yeah, I know, this looks weird. I've been playing around with this for a little bit. Um, we have 16 lava fabricators here. And we're using these hardened fluid ducts. And with the 16 lava fabricators, we've reached the output <laughs> of these fluid ducts. 
Like it actually needs to attach to all six sides of this barrel in order to fully uh, send its lava. Like for instance, this lava fabricator here fills up and then this thing goes through its idle time and it drains out. And then this thing starts producing lava again and it fills up. Like it just doesn't have enough space for all that lava to go. Uh, but we need another side of this bedrockium drum so we can export the lava. Uh, so I have a stack upgrade, some speed upgrades in here to send lava to our igneous extruder. Um, so yeah, we're full on lava, we're full on water. Uh, our tesseract down below is sending water from over there to right here. And we are putting that into the igneous extruder through both sides. And finally, it is sending it, the items that it's making through the bottom. So as you can see right here, we've just gone through all of our lava, I think. Yeah, this lava bedrockium drum basically is empty now. So we just made a whole bunch of obsidian, like a short amount of time. 47 more stacks. That's great. So I'm just going to take this and throw this over into our ME system. Um, I've set up patterns. Oh, that magnet is crazy. Let's get rid of this stuff. <laughs> I've set up patterns to make the witherproof blocks. And there's actually the witherproof dungeon bricks and runic glass. So I'm probably going to make the glass just so we can see what's going on a little bit easier. But yeah, I'm going to continue working on this, making some more lava, or I'm sorry, making some more obsidian. And we'll be back, guys. Okay, guys, so I went ahead and I got some stuff set up here. Uh, we have a transfer node here with world interaction upgrades in it, so it should suck things out of the world uh, from far in front of it. Uh, we have some speed upgrades and a stack upgrade. Probably don't need all these different upgrades, the amount that we have, but that's what I put in there. Uh, we have a test rack here. This is our main base power, so we are receiving power, and we're sending items back to our AE system. And finally, we have our mob grinder back here. So this should do a 7x7 seven seven in front of it. So that should pretty much kill anything that's in this glass. Now, uh, a word of caution on this runic glass. <laughs> I found out you can't break it. It is completely indestructible. Um, hopefully that gets fixed in the future. Like, even the tooltip at the top doesn't say it's harvestable. So this is like a warded block, basically, that you can't ever remove unless you're in creative mode, it looks like. Yeah. Uh, maybe there's another thing in uh, the runic dungeons mod that'll let you pick that back up. Maybe this magical staff or something. I honestly don't know, but as far as I can tell, uh, you can't remove this block once you place it. So, if you are going to mess around with this stuff, make sure you put it in a spot that's not going to be a problem if you don't have access to creative mode to break these things. So, the idea is... We're going to be spawning a monster somewhere, a wither boss, and that wither boss is going to be teleported right over there. So if I were to drop through here, we go right inside the middle of this runic glass. Now, this should eventually be completely closed off so nothing can get in here, and the grinder should be able to kill whatever's in there. So we should be able to drop wither boss after wither boss after wither boss in there, and it should all be contained. That's the idea. World interaction upgrade... Uh, transfer node will pull all the items out and that'll go back to our AE system all the wither bosses are in here and will be killed by this mob grinder okay so is this gonna work I don't know I really don't want to close this thing off completely uh, because I won't be able to get in and out until I know for sure that's gonna work flawlessly so I'm gonna leave that open like that I think that should be fine uh, normally things that are wither boss proof like uh, don't allow explosions through so I think all this stuff should be fine but I think I'm ready for the first test <laughs> this grinder should kill whatever's in front of it like immediately as soon as the boss is ready to be killed so let's see how this works hopefully this won't turn out poorly it might I'm hoping the wither boss just floats straight down and gets teleported looks like that works just as I expected let's stand back a little bit get our draconic staff or power ready he got killed, all the items are gone, perfect. That's exactly what I'm looking for. So now all I need is an automatic way to create the wither boss and drop it through this portal to send them in there. And we should have ourselves an automatic uh, wither killer and it should also make us those runic keys. So we should be able to like fly through these dungeons, open these doors and get to like the boss or whatever there is in this dimension, I'm not entirely sure. So let me work on this a little bit more, guys, and we'll be back. 
All right, guys. So I set up a little something here to try and spawn in our wither bosses automatically. So what we have is seven autonomous activators. These guys are all set to redstone enabled. Like when the it has a redstone signal, it'll place blocks or do whatever is inside of them. What we wanted to do is have the bottom four place soul sand, the top three place the skulls. And if I do believe everything is correct, the wither boss should just fall down into the portal. Uh, we're right over by where we started spawning in the wither skeletons last episode. Our processing room's right here. Hopefully, the wither boss does go down and doesn't stay around here and start shooting at me because that would be terrible. Um, so the way this is set up, we have two different channels for the redstone signal. Uh, we have... The green channel up here which places the skulls and we have the red channel down here which places the soul sand. Uh, the red channel goes right off that lever. The green channel goes right off of this repeater which is set to four ticks. I think everything should be set up here. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, I haven't given this a test yet so I don't know for sure if everything is going to work according to plan but I think we have a good shot at it. Uh, the only thing I can see that would potentially go wrong is when we spawn the wither boss, it kind of like glitches into these blocks or something and doesn't sink down. If that's the case, I'm going to like punch the glass and punch the wither boss and see if I can get to go into the portal. Um, yeah, I don't want all of my stuff around here ruined. <laughs> um, okay, so that is... <clears throat> is that all four? Yeah, that's all four. So then we need to put Wither Skeleton Skulls in here. Eventually we'll have this set up. Either I will come through here and manually fill all this up. And we will have 9 stacks of Skulls and 9 stacks of all the, uh, the Soul Sand and all of these uh, <laughs> Autonomous Activators. Or we'll do it automatically. I'll probably just fill up manually. I can't imagine we would need more than 9 stacks worth of Nether Stars anytime soon. All right, so this is the moment of truth. Let's take a look in our ME system. Uh, we have 58 nether stars. This works if we get 59 nether stars. <laughs> it doesn't work if the wither boss stays here. <laughs> oh no, let's hope that doesn't happen. All right, let's give this a shot. All right, well there goes the wither boss. Looks like that did in fact work. So let's just take a look at our nether star count here. We should see this go up to 59 and pro there it is, 59. It works! We did it! We can spawn where the bosses, send them off to the runic dungeon where they get killed, and we should also get uh, runic keys. Oh no, they're, I think they're called dungeon keys? Yeah, we should get these guys too, along with the, the division sigils and things like that. Oh man, this is pretty awesome. I kind of want to spawn in a few of these now. I'm feeling confident. Um, We'll probably have to use something better than a lever in the future. Um, maybe a button or something. I don't know. But yeah, let's try this again. Uh, soul sand. Let's... I don't know. Let's do that. How does that... That turns into 16? Okay, we'll do 16 of those. And skulls. So we need... 16 of those. I think that should be fine. <laughs> yeah, we're going to give this a stress test. Is that off? That is off. Okay, so skull, skull, skull. Yeah, this is going to be awesome if we can just get our wither, uh, our nether stars like this. And that goes in right like that. All right. So let's give this a shot. Can I hang out back here? Lever. Wait, what just happened? Um. Huh. If I leave this flipped, what happens? Yep, that isn't. Whoa, that's not good. Get out of here. Get out of there. Uh, I can't break that block. Whew. Oh, that was close. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, that was so close. Ah, <sighs> okay, so we need to control this so it doesn't do that many at a time. We can't just leave that on, that has to be a quick pulse. Whew, that could have been bad. Oh my goodness. Okay, stars, 62, it looks like that worked. <laughs> Alright guys, so I tell you what, I'm going to play with this a little bit off camera. 
Uh, I'm going to try and perfect this. Obviously, we need to build a little building around this, give us some walls and things like that. This was kind of like a small little test just to see if we could actually get this to work. It looks like it does work and everything is going to plan. <laughs> oh my goodness, guys. That was almost really bad. All right, that's it for this episode of Feed the Beast Infinity. Hope you guys liked it. Thanks for watching. Remember to leave a like if you did like it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.